follow cinnamon's path across the sea to where merchants became millionaires from importing this otherworldly treat. So I'm off to one of cinnamon's first landing spots in the United States, Salem, Massachusetts. So what is the first thing you think of when I say Salem, Massachusetts? Which is right? But I bet you have no idea of the small seaside town of 40,000 people was once the richest city in America because it was one of the major stops for the spice trade. And the most sought after and fought after spice at that time was cinnamon. I'm here to learn about how and why cinnamon built up highly secretive and highly lucrative black markets in this city centuries ago. To understand how that happened, I'm headed to meet a man who is an expert in all things Salem. You must be Chris, right? Or Robert? Oh yeah, it's good to meet you. Well, I gotta say, obviously, this is where the cinnamon came in, right? Yes, this is Derby Wharf right ahead. Now, uh, Liza Hasker Derby, he was actually America's first millionaire. And uh, one of the first ones that made his great fortune with uh, cinnamon. But people related to Derby and his business partners, they had a little secret going on. Oh, what was the secret? They had about three miles worth of tunnels going through town. How can that be when the customs building is right here and the dock is right there? They take the cargo off and they smuggle it into the warehouse. Before that, the scales could come out from the custom house. You sneak your goods into our trap door into this very elaborate tunnel system. So they didn't pay duties. Oh, they didn't pay duties. This network of smuggling tunnels underneath the city of Salem was over eight miles in length. They began at the warehouses located on the pier and secretly connected to the homes of millionaire importers, their shops, their banks, and the back rooms of pubs in order to circumvent paying their ascribed taxes on their imports. These guys wanted to make as much money as possible off cinnamon. So who made these tunnels? It was all the ship captains who were bringing in the cinnamon and other commodities through so they could avoid paying duties. And the guys who paid for this, they were secretaries of state, secretaries of navy, they were people who were behind the elections of presidents, like John Quincy Adams. They were behind William Harrison's election. They were. You're telling me that cinnamon, yeah, the that, spice yeah. that I use every day, the the was, profits was, from that smuggling has shaped our constitution, our national banking. Half the custom agency was involved in this. So you're telling me that everybody was corrupt to do with spices. Would you actually like to go see one of these tunnels? Let's go. Okay. And this spot right here is uh, to show you a cutout in the tunnels. See that this grate and the other grate there? So there's actually a chamber right here. Oh, they're not drains? No. I gotta see these tunnels. Um, listen, this is fascinating to me. These cinnamon tunnels in Salem were essentially a secret underground city. There are not many of these remaining, and those that do have been reappropriated into modern use. But there are a select few that are virtually untouched. All right, got some lanterns for us. Chris is taking me to see one of them. <laughs> so there, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 hang on a minute. This is the original door. Yeah. I'm here in Salem, Massachusetts. Wow, this is an original tunnel, yes? Where I'm about to lay my eyes on the remnants of an old network of tunnels, originally built by America's first millionaire, Eliza Haskett Derby, to circumvent the taxation of the cinnamon it imported from Sri Lanka. These tunnels went to warehouses, they went to banks, they went to per personal homes, and that was the, the undercity world yes. of transportation for the illicit <laughs> spice trade. They were actually just smuggling it, not to pay duties. They bring it into the tunnel system, and they get to store the goods there until they're ready to bring it to the stores to sell. They bring it up, they sell the commodities like cinnamon in the stores, and then since they didn't pay duties on it, they had to sort of launder the money a little bit. They bring it back into the tunnels, and they bring it to the bank. So they're all in cahoots? Yes, everybody, uh, half the customer agency were involved in the smuggling. So they were getting money on the side? Yeah. It's the oldest story in the book, The Rich Get Richer. Clearly, the merchants of the 19th century Salem had an ample motive and opportunity to squeeze every last penny they could out of cinnamon. But that money didn't come out of thin air. It came from bloodshed 8,519 miles away in Sri Lanka, where wars were being fought to control access to the spice. 
during the time, but the best way to become a millionaire is not to be a governor, but to be a custom agent. So what else would they do with cinnamon? Well, sometimes they make these great drinks, and I know a place downtown. I'm in. Okay, let's go then. See, that was a tough one, right? <laughs> Tell an English guy he's going for a drink. To far too many people, cinnamon has always been just a spice. Used to give mm -hmm. some added flavor to our food. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. That is prolific. I have learned so much about the spice cinnamon that I would never have ever known before. Cinnamon that comes from the bark of a tree, funded armies, militias, brought down countries, and made millionaires right here in Salem. To see how this spice that has long been shrouded in mystery has shaped the world as we know it today is genuinely astonishing. After this journey, I will never ever look at cinnamon the same way again.